All right. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Getting a slightly earlier start this week. Yep. Uh, and we might also uh, be going slight, leaving slightly earlier uh, today. Is the hope? Yes, I, I have, I have, I have boyfriendly duties, <laughs> which I, which I'm not going to complain about. I love my girlfriend. As is. Okay. But uh, we're gonna just jump right into it then. Jill wants to buy a fan, even though it's winter. Buying one will prevent her from getting distracted. You can now use Namo Camo to customize your room. Did we <laughs> cover that last week? I think we did. We did something like that. Where we took a look at this app. Uh, <laughs> the... um, uh... so these things cost it. money, though, so uh, we're just going to move on. And I think it's this one. So we'll get that. Turn. Uh, what's a Namo camera? Something to liven up things in this room. Uh, did we read all this? No. Oh, Position to reach historic levels next year. The most countries in the world stopped the economy is still ongoing problem. I think we did read this. I believe we. I believe we did read these. Yes. Yeah. Augmented eyes being hacked, so it must just be the one. There, there was an update here, so. Mm -hmm. Alarms arise as the Apollo Trust Bank suffers a terrorist attack. Updating by Kimberly Lavalette. Hijack screens at downtown Casanova announced what seems to be a terrorist attack aimed at the Apollo Trust Bank. Information suggests that current, uh, currently unidentified, unidentified bomber is insi already inside the building. Oh boy. Sorry. The White Knight's counterterrorism unit responded to the threat immediately. However, the bank was then locked down by an external network attack. We might be dealing with a dual threat here, CTU's Chloe Bauer told AE. The bank has been sealed down shut uh, using its own disaster prevention system. However, <coughs> none of the terminals at the bank were working at the time. The building is basically sealed at this point. So the hostages are trapped. Oops, say is that right? Mm. Mm hmm. Alright, uh, and let's get to it. Off to work. Alright. <coughs> Shall I read Jill? Yeah, go for it. Good evening! Well, I didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink. Uh, you can take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the streets are not exactly safe right now. They've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come with the bar closing soon. Literally can't afford. I wonder if any of the <laughs> any bar has used impending closure as a means of getting their employees to work. Seems like the total opposite would happen. Not to mention I get bored out of my brains in my apartment, so I'd rather come here anyway. What'd you say? Nothing important. Gil isn't back yet? No, I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. He's... If you say so. That girl's still here? Yep, she was sleeping so peacefully I felt bad about waking her up. So, would you mind doing that for me? Actually, yes, I mind. <laughs> But you're the boss, and it's kind of my fault she's here in the first place. Uh, that's why they call me Dirty Harry whenever there's a dirty job to do. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> mm. Hey, young lady, sleep another hour, and we'll have to start charging you a motel fee. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, right, young, the shoddy downtown bar. Oh, let's see, all my gear is in place. And neither my pants nor my uh, panties, shirt, or bra have been displaced. Oh, it's the flat bartender. Good morning. Good evening. Evening. Oh, well, it's the best night or er, day of sleep I've had in quite some time. Sorry for all the trouble I may have caused you today or last night. 
<laughs> just don't worry about it. You're so nice, flat bartender. <laughs> Marry me streaming, John. Thanks for oh, taking boy. care of me. Bye! Ellipses. <laughs> That's about all you can say. Ellipses. <laughs> Hello, guys and gals. Streaming chance back in action with her batteries reloaded. Ah, the moon, it burns! I feel like I've just unleashed something terrible into the world. Come on, it's not that bad. Say, so what's this bottle? A client gave it to me yesterday. A gift of sorts, I'm guessing. Oh, cool. Alright, still it, did slip that in, I think. It's some sort of rum. Rum? Nice. Want me to serve you a bit of it? Hmm, yeah, sure. Jackson, are we gonna get the boss drunk? It's it's just a little taste. <laughs> it's just a little a little bit of grandpa booze. Every drink here is priced five hundred Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was a description of the booze specifically. No, I don't think uh, any of this has a description. It's what oh, it man. says on the tin. It's a ball oh, drink. Man, I, I really wanted the description for grandpa booze. Oh well. Uh, well, I, I guess technically this drink is a fedora, and the description is with perfume and plum. That's true. Mix and serve. There we go. Here. All right. I'm gonna enjoy this in my office. Thanks. Aw. Anytime. Okay then. <laughs> Time to serve mix. Time to serve mix and change lives. Wait a minute. Is there a word? There's a word missing. Wait, that's not how it goes. Ellipses. Uh, no one here to retort. Off your game. Oh, hey, Spirit. man. Huh? Well, welcome back. Uh, with oh, your hello. Dana emote. Yes, man. It feels lonely without Gil here. I just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to dangerous or weird types coming in here. Welcome back. Thank you for coming again. Oh my god, it's the brain from Doom Patrol. Good evening. How'd you get in here? <laughs> Holy shit, that was a record-breaking jinx. Well, welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? I'll have a blue fairy. Don't make a joke about becoming real. Don't make a joke about becoming real. I'm a real boy. <laughs> On it. Some Let's give this... Mm -hmm. Brain, a real some... blue fairy. Yeah. One of these will make your teeth turn blue. Hope you brushed well. He doesn't have teeth. They would have teeth. All Their right. brain in a jar. Put oh. all straight to the brain. Yep. Blue <laughs> fairy. Here you go. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Spirit of, Spirit of Ray. Thank you for the bits. And Redeem's Hydra. There, here's me sipping into the microphone. Don't know how well you can hear that, but uh, I am hydrated. Good to hydrate. Yeah. yeah, those channel points in there to, to be used. It's not just for uh, harassing Andrew. Mm-hmm. The sound effect ones are fun. Hmm. Nice, yeah, this is the thing. So, um, how are you gonna... Oh, you can grab stuff. Should have figured as much. You can drink stuff? And eat. I have the same system Loom do. Can I ask you something, um, or... Ms. Doesn't have a button with their pronouns on it. No. Call me Taylor. Just Taylor. And yes, a cutie like you can ask me anything. Okay, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, Okay, just Taylor. Nah, too easy. Ah, the low-hanging fruit jokes. Mm -hmm. You are... A brain in a jar, right? Shredder, get me a body. 
I'm sure I'm sure to a hologram of that of that, I'm sure. Yep, I'm a bona fide human brain in a jar. So how? Why? What, does my handsomeness make you speechless? <laughs> You're not something a girl sees every day, and that's saying quite a bit in these parts. Fear not, for I have a speech prepared for these situations. A speech? You're seeing one of the five great living bottles brains of the world. We are brains living in conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. I think we found out about the existence of brain engineers just last week. Yeah, that sounds right. All while computers in our jars scan our activities. In a slow but steady manner, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times, huh? There's a side of a, there's a beeping noise in the song that sounds just like my fire alarm, and it is. I keep looking over my shoulder like is something happening over there. Anyways. Yeah, no. Not out of, out of exaggeration or anything like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Sure. What brings one of our world's five brains and jars to this place, though? Oh, I'm from around here, actually. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in quite a bit of time. Have you come here before? Sadly, no. Otherwise, I'd remember a cute face like yours. Speaking of which, can I have your name? Um, it's Jill. Jill? That's a really cute name. Thank you. Say, weren't you scared of going outside today? What with the commotion around it all? It didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, you're right. It's going to take more than a cryptic, cryptic but on, ominous news to stop me. <clears throat> you're awfully energetic. Did you know that? Sorry, does that bother you? No, not at all. Just that I figured a brain in a jar wouldn't be so happy. Mm. It's very, like, Genki uh, anime archetype. While I was alive, my body got to the point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of existence allows me to accomplish more than I ever could before. Plus, I'm doing something that'll help people in the long run. Wouldn't you be happy? I wonder. You want to make me happy, Jill? I was going to say what a charmer, but this is... You know. <laughs> Depends on what it takes. Mm. Don't worry, just give me a beer. Alright then, yeah, I'll make you happy. One beer I like Taylor, they entertain me. <laughs> Four. And all next. Nice frothy beer. Mm. Here, a beer. Ah, uh, yes. No matter what happens, beer is always good. It's interesting, though. Just yesterday, I was talking to a client about brain uploads. You were? Yeah, we were talking about how even if you upload your brain, you'd still be here. I've thought about that, too. Do you think you in the cybernetic environment would feel like she was indeed transferred? Like, would she remember everything, like waking up someplace else and so on? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Yeah. Do you remember going through the transporter tubes? <laughs> I was actually thinking earlier about being able to transfer someone's brain into a lilum. One of those brains is being used in in such an experiment, actually. They can make a functional lilum. One of the five brains, I guess. Yeah. Unfortunately, the wiring and the other stuff makes it more look like creepy than anything. Look more creepy than anything. They aren't transferring his identity or anything, though just wiring him to a body. Oh... You think someone would rather do that than floating around exposed in a jar? I have to admit the whole brain thing does look creepy. I can see all my wrinkles. <laughs> but the body I'm telling you about is just uncanny looking. Speaking of uncanny, how did you feel when you saw yourself like this for the first time? It was quite a shock, quite a shock actually. 
It didn't last too long, though. I never was too attached to my body. Later in my life, that was almost literal. You know what the downside to this body is? I can't get drunk. If you want, if you want to call that a downside... If you want to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkenness is part of the whole experience. Why, though? Lolan can get drunk with no problem. Yeah, but in their case, their brain is a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Depending on the model, their drunk subroutine might throw it in a different behavioral cycle, even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in a jar is figuring out how exactly you work. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Hey, Jill. Oh, Alma. Just, oh, Alma? Where's the courtesy one would expect from a plebeian bar staff? Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? <laughs> Happy? Not when you put it that way. Why, hello there, beautiful. Hmm? Whoa! <laughs> you hurt my feelings with that, darling. <laughs> so, so, sorry, you just don't see talking disembodied brains every day. I, I mean, I did work a summer in a little maintenance, but even then, those were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least you're not running or, fa or fainting. Your name was Alma, right? I'm Taylor. N n nice to meet you, Taylor. Say, Alma, can I buy you a drink? Sorry, I only date people who are at least 50% organic and have at least one face. Hmm, I know what to strive for then. Just kidding, it'd make me happy to make you happy by buying you a drink. Does that bother you? I guess if Jill's the bartender, then I don't have a problem with that. Awesome, I'll pay for your next drink then. What will you have? I'll have a cobalt velvet. And you, Taylor? I'm fine, actually. You're gonna have me drink alone? I don't want to drink that much. Okay, then. Just a cobalt velvet. Right. Straight from Taylor and Alma. It's like champagne served on a cup that has a bit of cola left. Bubbly, classy, and burning. Oh, I don't think we've served this one before. I don't think it's coming to... We haven't read that description before. Yeah, it's definitely new. Your mm. drink! Hope you enjoy it. You know, you've been nicer to me than these past minutes than at least three guys have been in the past year. Ju Judging from the way you two talk, I'm guessing you've been a client here for a while now, right? Only for about half a year if memories or so if memory serves, right? Really? One would think it's been a lot longer. Uh, it feels like it's been longer. Shut up, you love me and you know it. So, you just started coming here and that was it? Well, the first time I came here, the other guy... Speaking of which, where's Pablo? Uh, Jillian. Archimedes. Dunno. Adventuring or something. <laughs> Anyways, the other guy served me the first time I came here. Nothing unusual there. Next time I showed up, Jill here was the one serving and... I don't know, I feel like she just gets me. There's this chemistry. We click. We click, she says. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than many other people is kind of sad, though. So it's good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, it's getting late and I've got to go. I'll leave you two lo lovely ladies alone. See ya. Bye. Please come again. I hope he does. That Taylor. Too. That Taylor sure was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently one of five brains being studied by scientists or something. There's a summary of it in this pamphlet. Let's see. Oh yeah, I've heard of them before. Can't believe I actually met one. Say, Alma, how many people are there in your family? Just curious. Well, aside from my mom and dad, we're five sisters. Sorry, four sisters and one brother. 
Ah, there was a change. Yeah. Funnily enough, we all have names that start with the first five letters in the alphabet. So you're the eldest one? No, don't be silly. I'm actually the middle kid. You're the middle kid, but your name starts with an A. Don't think too much about it. I never said the order reflected our ages. So, you know, the parents have planned to have five kids from the beginning. So I this see. All, this big plan all worked out. Oh, boy. My sister Carlotta is the eldest one. Then there's Diana just before me. Diana. Then comes Ava. And at the bottom lies Bella. Ahem. Sorry. The youngest one is Bernardo. You, you're, you've never been alone, I'm guessing. Can't complain about that, I guess. It helps that we never five. It helps that we were never five in the same house. By the time Evita and Bernie were born, Diana and Carlotta had already moved. Speaking of family, today I came because I need a break from everything that's gotten that's been going on with them. Do you live with them? No, but Evita and Bernie do. Not to mention I visit them almost every day. Anyway, my second eldest sister, Diana, uh, just separated from her husband. It's not even been a week, and she's already come got some other guy in her bed. She left her kid with the husband's parents and pretty much forgot about them. Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy, but these days she's really making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life oh she didn't boy. even think about what the, she didn't even think about that when she married the guy at 20 she didn't think about that when marrying a guy she had only known for like three months you should take your own advice hey I'd never marry someone who I could, who could catch my attention so quickly okay sure there was that one time when it almost happened but I blame the damn stadium kiss cam Oh, no! Kiss Cam? I was going out with the guy my little sister introduced... Out with the guy my little inter sister introduced to me. Seems he was her friend's brother or something. We went out a couple times. He invited me to a baseball game. The mood was nice, but then later the Kiss Cam focused on us, and instead of kissing me, he proposed. I almost got no. caught up in the mood and accepted. Oh... No. no! Bad juju. No, no, bad idea. Huh. So I take it you rejected him in a stadium on the fucking kiss cam? That's what he deserves. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for me to feel bad for this guy. I'm sorry. We went out for like three weeks. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. I honest to God can't understand why I thought that would be a good idea. That sounds too convoluted, you know? Proposing and waiting for the wedding night just for sex. Never underestimate the lengths a man is willing to go to to get in your bed. To get you in their bed. I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. It's starting to sound like, I don't know, shonen jump romances, even. <laughs> I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. Want anything else? Hmm, what's that bottle? Oh yeah, it's just some rum a client gave me yesterday. A gift? What did you do? A good enough service, I'm guessing. We... Ka... Huh, interesting name. <laughs> what does it mean? k the name of the chieftain in some native tribes. I see. Do you want me to serve you some of this? I'll pass. I don't have a, too many m good memories when rum's involved. Shame. Give me a friend re weaver instead, will you? Alright. I wonder what's up with her and rum. But anyways, just give her a fringe weaver. I think they asked for fringe weaver all just sent to a rewrite of Dream Weaver by Gary Wright. Mm. <laughs> uh, we getting her plastered? Yeah, I think we're getting... I think we're getting the lady plastered. Alright, then. One fringe weaver. What kind of memories do you have with rum? Nothing you need to worry about. 
Okay. All right. Now my now my now is my turn to ask questions. About what? What kind of family is your family? Well, I'm an only child. My mom and my dad split amicably. My mom is a violinist, so she was always away from home with the orchestra. I spent most of my time with my dad, my aunt, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I'd say my childhood was quite uneventful. Uh, didn't you get something like your mom's artistic vein or something? I played with the violin until I was around 16, I think. What made you stop? I don't know. I just kind of said, that's it, one day, and stopped. What about cousins or the rest of your family? I see very little of them, actually. Mainly because my dad moved away from most of them. Most of my mom's family live in France to boot. Ah. Huh. So your mom's French? Yep. Can you speak any French? Mon et... <laughs> Mon Eriglisse es plein de Inglés. Close enough. There's some words that are supposed to be silent there. Ooh, what does that mean? Rubbish? I don't know. I can't speak French. <laughs> I did try, though, but college started and I stopped taking classes. Funny thing, I actually have a cousin from my mom's side that lives close by. But you'll be hard-pressed to make me spot him in a crowd. You're kind of lucky, you know. All of my mom's side of the family lives here. The chances of me meeting someone that I'm related to on the street are ridiculously high. But yeah, that's the primer of my family. Nothing too interesting, sadly. Your mom's a French violinist, and you can't call that uninteresting? I'm wondering if your family has ever made a fuss about you being a hacker. Hacker makes it sound too exotic. It's like if I called you a mixologist. <laughs> Please don't ever. It sounds like something somebody would say to make bartenders sound sophisticated. Uh, we have opinions about this. Stuff. Oh, See? yeah. I mean, hacker is a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. Uh, white hack hacker, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. People want to find flaws in the security of their systems, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Be it Glitch, Glitch City or elsewhere in the world, they need security, and I'm their woman. You've told quite a few stories about cracking the databases to retrieve info. Like some sort of mercenary, though? That doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. Makes the whole thing sound illegal when it's actually an honest job. Didn't you tell me you once secured some incriminating pics from a guy's cell phone? Legally? <laughs> a, a mostly honest job. Sheesh. I had a warrant, thank you. What made you become a hacker, by the way? <laughs> by the way? I've always, become, always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I've always had a Sudoku or a crossword with me. Rubik's Cube. But at some point, they started feeling kind of samey. So, when I started college, I took a course on system security. I feel like the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean, there are all kinds of things that involved in breaching that security. You need to attack the stuff from different angles. And it's something that's always evolving. The whole point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gist of it, they change everything. So it's kind of like an always evolving puzzle. A puzzle that I helped make harder at that. Huh. I didn't think about it that way. There was a brief period where I was thinking about cybersecurity as a career. And then uh -huh. I kind of got, got the lesson about, if you do this, uh, you're going to have to break into a lot of uh, bad people's computers and see a lot <laughs> of the evidence that they leave behind. People hmm. like terrorists, people that are doing hate crimes, people that are, you know, child sex hmm. rings. Uh. So, you, they talked about their experience of, like, having a really dark and, like, gallows sense of humor to cope with that, and I was just like, you know what, Th that's not the life for me. Yeah, I don't blame you. So, we, we went elsewhere. It was the last action you 
It is less action-y than what movies make it up to be, though. No real-time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still, seeing my code break through something, it's an amazing feeling. Will you have anything else? Hmm. I'll have a classy drink. Any classy drink. Here goes nothing! So, any classy drink. This should work. Uh, where we can uh, break out the, the special. I, th I think it's <laughs> technically classic, but I think it still qualifies as classy. It'll, it'll work. Shouldn't break our streak. All right. Here you are. Yep, just what I need. Thanks. Great. Yeah. It's working in the code. Oh, yeah. I can trust the uh, the research <laughs> I did. Say, Jill, what's the worst that could happen if you don't get your drinks right? Well, people have the right to not give me money. If they don't pay for it, I don't get my bonus. No bonus means less money and no tips. Which doesn't help, because I have to pay bills. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's real hard to get a game over in this. It's apparently mm, but possible, but it's more likely that you'll end up with like a bad end, where you can't pay your rent at the end of, end of the game. An, act an, act an actual game over would probably involve deliberately botching it on purpose. Yeah, deliberately botching many drinks in a row, and they have to be like simple <laughs> drinks, like the sugar rush that they use in the tutorial. <laughs> right. So. Makes sense. And we can't even serve messed up drinks. We have to serve something, right? Mm. Deliberately serve the wrong drink over and over. Uh, do you have to make an effort to pay your bills? Nope. Oh, lucky. You have no idea how much I hate you right now. Oh, financial security. It's a hell of a drug. Well, my job pays pretty well, and I'm not the kind to spend too much on things other than food and bills. Maybe maintenance on my hands and new equipment, but aside from that... Oh, I know. If you have trouble with your bills, why not live with me? We could be roommates. And they Dunno. Were, and they were roommates. <laughs> Moving my stuff through the stairs because the elevator's broken. Having to move my liquor collection. <laughs> Never mind the fact that my cat's a shut-in. They got very upset the one time I moved some furniture around. Oh, poor four. The idea of moving just gives me a headache. You shouldn't take things so seriously when I say them, you know? I don't, but I've thought about it before. Now, I need some air. I'm going to take my break. You want to come? Are you inviting me to the back of the bar? You should invite me to dinner first. Every minute you waste making jokes is time taken for my break. Fine, let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. Call me if anyone comes in. Sure, sure. Hmm. On in the back of the bar. Hmm. Let's see. Oh. It is now safe to keep playing. Yay. Uh, were you saying you need to go at, uh, quarter two? Ah, uh, at the latest, yeah. Given, given that we hit a save point, do we want to pause now or play for a little bit longer? Yeah, I, th I think we're pausing now, because it'll, it'll probably be like 45 minutes. Yeah, that's a good point. So. No. Alright. Yeah, I think a bit of a shorter game, or shorter stream is fine once in yep. a while. Perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I don't have any other thing. I don't have anything planned to kill more time to fill it up. So yeah, let's just, uh, just get on out of here. Actually, yeah. So thanks for coming, everyone. Thank uh, you. We will see you next week, uh, where we resume from here. Indeed. Uh, who's live right now? Brian, Brian McInnes. That works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go uh, enjoy some Dead by Daylight. Yeah, there we go. That's fun. All right. Watch, watch dumb kids get murdered. Yeah, my that game that just is only missing like Freddy. Right? They've got everyone else. They probably have a Stranger I, Things collab going on right now. 
They might they might not have Jason just because I know he, he's involved in a weird legal clusterfuck that I think is only just beginning to resolve itself. Yeah. I don't think they have Freddy, though. I think that's correct. I was thinking yeah. of Jason. I, I said Freddy when I meant Friday the 13th. <laughs> ah, I see. They might have Freddy, then, I think. Uh, yeah. Freddy, Freddy's weird. He's one of the few major uh, horror figures who does not have a lot of weird legal bullshit because uh, all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies made by uh, New Line. Okay. No, no, no interconnect. No, no splitting among companies for him. No, no. Film has that was your, it. Yeah. yeah, that was your useless trivia for the night. You can go tell that at parties and impress people. Mm -hmm. Make your asshole sound smart at horror con. Exactly. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you. Good night.